Good morning, and welcome to worship here at First Baptist Church of Jasper, Georgia. My name is Preston, and it is good to be together this morning for worship. We gather together as travelers on a journey to bring praise and to worship and give thanksgiving to our God. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious and holy God, we come. We come with much on our minds and our hearts this morning. But during this time, we are here to worship. We are here to praise and to remember you as our God. So we give you thanks for this time. Amen. Now please join me today for the responsive reading. I will read the parts in italics and we will read the bowl together. God, our lover, look in mercy on our anxious lives. Day by day we struggle to achieve, rarely stopping to ask if our achievements match your will. Day by day we battle to communicate, rarely remembering to check if our com communication is a channel for your good news. Day by day, we endeavor to control, rarely pausing to ensure that first we are controlled by your Spirit. Forgive the frantic fury of our anxious lives. Speak to us in the midst of the struggle of our daily living. Catch us now, we pray, in a moment of silence as we wait together on you. Gracious God, your love brings life to dead souls, light to dark minds, and strength to the weak. This morning's scripture is from Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 through 31. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and he crossed the ford of the Yabok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of the joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Penueo, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penueo, limping because of his head. My heart is filled with thankfulness to him who bore my pain, who plumbed the depths of
Tots. Is there a game that you like to play at home? Maybe a board game or a card game? One thing I love to play is Rook. It's a card game with blue cards and it takes a few people to play and Pastor Preston and I love to play Rook. But when you're playing Rook, there's one special card that you want and that's the blue Rook card. It's worth 20 points, which is a lot in the game. But you have to keep it a secret. So when you're playing and you have the card, you can't let people know that you have it. You can't show that you're excited with a big smile. You have to act as if you don't have anything special and everything's normal. Your face and your facial expression, it can't show that you're excited. You just have to remain calm. Maybe smile occasionally, but don't let people know that you have the special card. Have you ever had to hide what you're feeling? Maybe you were sad and about to cry, but you didn't want to cry where you were. Maybe you got upset at school, or maybe you got upset at church, and you didn't want people to know you're upset. So when you want to frown, you just smile instead. But is that good? We've all done it. We've all smiled when we're sad. And when people ask if we're okay, we say, yes, we're fine. But is that being very truthful? Kids aren't the only ones that do it. Adults do it too. Even Pastor Preston and I sometimes hide what we're feeling. See, Preston, when he's sad or he's trying to hide what he's feeling, he starts making jokes and gets people to laugh. When I'm trying to hide my feelings, I tend to get a little sassy and have an attitude. It's not the best idea. But it would be better if Preston and I and everyone we're more truthful about what we were feeling, more truthful with each other, more truthful to ourselves and to God, because God cares about every emotion that we have. He wants to know when we're sad, happy, joyful, and just feeling down, because God wants, us, wants to support us through all of it. So this week, let's not hide our feelings like we hide our cards. Let's tell the people around us and tell God how we're really feeling. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, thank you for this time that we can talk to each other while we're at home. Thank you for reminders, even in card games, that you are with us and you want to know everything that's going on in our lives. Be with us that we may be more honest about how we're feeling with you and with those around us. In your son's name we pray. Amen. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery. In oceans deep, my faith will stand. And I will call upon your name. And keep my eyes above the waves when oceans 
emotions arise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. Your grace abounds in deepest waters, your sovereign hand will be my guide. When feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed and you won't start now. My soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me take me deeper than my feet could ever wander and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my savior spirit lead me where my trust without borders let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me take me deeper than my feet could ever wander and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior for I will call upon your My soul will rest in your embrace. I am yours, and you are One of the things that I loved to do as a child was play cards. Played fish, played old maid, played canasta, but the one game that I loved to play the most was rook. I remember watching my folks play with my grandparents, then play with their friends, and I was itching to get to the table so to learn how to play rook. And I remember as a young child when I began to learn how to play and they would pass out all the cards. You know that's the, the strongest card in the game of Rook was called the Rook card and had a, had a bird on it. And I remember when I first began to play and I would get my hand and I would see my hand and if I had the Rook, my eyes would begin to light up. I would get a little excited and my posture would get a little bit stronger a little bit better, a little bit straighter, and people around me began to know really fast that I had the rook. They just saw it on my face. I just didn't have much of a poker face. And I began to realize as I played more that I would need to begin to hide it, to begin to, whenever I had a good hand or I had the rook card, I just needed to act like I didn't have it. And we play, we, we use that poker face when we play cards, but how often when we get up from the card table and we continue on to this game called life, we continue to carry that poker face with us. A poker face saying, hey, we're fine. 
Everything's good, no matter what struggle is going on in our life. Because we use that poker face to cover it up. There's a saying that we said, I heard a quote once, never underestimate the pain of a person. Because in all honesty, everyone is struggling. It's just some of us are better at hiding it than others. Some of us have a poker face. And this morning, we encounter a man named Jacob whose life was filled with struggles. He struggled with his daddy. He struggled with his brother. He struggled with his, his wives. He struggled with his in-law, his father-in-law. He struggled with God. He struggled with himself. See, Jacob was a trickster. He was a deceiver. So in a way, he had this poker face as he worked with and dealt with people and as he struggled with people. And some of these struggles that he had throughout his journey were his own doing. Because of his own deceit and his trickster ways, he caused struggle for himself or the people he was in relationship with. Some of the struggles he encountered were based on the decisions of his relatives, his, the other people around him. And some of the things of the struggles that he dealt with were out of his control completely. completely. And we find Jacob going from one struggle to the next. To set the scene for this passage, we have to realize that he had just left living with his father-in-law Laban. See, he had married Laban's two daughters, Leah and Rachel. And he didn't get along with Laban. And he began one night to, to look at his wives and his, his servants and his, and his kids and say, we're going, we're leaving. So in the night he left, well, Laban found out. So Laban went to track him down and they kind of had it out. And they made up this kind of, this, this, this altar, kind of a way of saying, Laban said, I'll stay over here and you stay over there. So then Jacob began to realize that he was in the country of Edom, which was Esau's territory, his brother's territory that he had stolen the blessing from. His father's blessing that was supposed to go to Esau was given to him. And the last encounter that he had with Esau was Esau wanted to kill him. So Jacob begins to send his servants over to see to find Esau to tell him that Jacob and his, and his family was in the land. And his servants came back and said, Esau's coming to look for you. With 400 men, he began to realize, oh no, things are not going to end up well. So he begins to pray, God, hurry, please just take this away. Please make them stop. But just in case, he gathers up a lot of livestock and he sends all the livestock with some servants to find Esau to give as a gift to maybe calm some of Esau's anger. So we find ourselves in this current passage where Jacob is struggling deeply. He's struggling from all of how his deceit and his trickery has landed him in this moment. He's struggling to get his family and his property and his servants across the river and as he does, he finds himself alone. And it's often when we find ourselves alone and we're struggling, it can be overwhelming. We don't know if Jacob was pacing in the story, if he was laying down, or if he was sitting still, but the passage said he begins to wrestle with a man. Now, no man approached him, but the Scripture infers, we infer as readers that the wrestler was God. And the struggle was a very deeply emotional and physically taxing encounter where God goes deep into Jacob's pain. And Jacob asked God to bless him. And he asked God to help him with his struggle. And we can all relate to Jacob because we all struggle. We struggle with our families. We struggle with our neighbors. We struggle with our coworkers. We struggle with ourselves. We struggle with God. We struggle with our circumstances. And some of our circumstance, some of our struggles are, are based on the decisions that we've made of our mistakes or just quirks or whatever that we've caused ourselves. 
Then there's been those struggles that have been brought on by other people's decisions, their mistakes, their whatever, they've caused it. And then there are those struggles that are just, they are, they're just the life that hand deals you, that we have no control over, it just is what it is. And when we encounter these struggles initially, we're looking for a way out. Because no one, none of us like to struggle. And it, struggles tend to, uh, tend to alter and inconvenience us. And we often pray that God would just get, get rid of the struggle around us because it's bothering how we live our lives. Jacob did this. And you know, Jacob in the past would have, in his trickster, in his deceiving ways, would have weaseled his way out of it. But this moment, in this structure, Jacob faced his struggle. He engaged it, he worked through it, and instead of trying to avoid it, he worked through his pain and through his discomfort. But Jacob also needed God to help him work through his struggle. And as God tried to let go in the midst of the struggle, Jacob wouldn't let him, and Jacob said, I need a blessing. I need your help. And in that moment, God changed. He blessed him. And God changed Jacob's name to Israel, one who struggles with God. And in that moment, it kind of that name change gave him this new sense of character, this new sense of identity as he moved forward to kind of leave some of that the ways that he did things of his deceitful ways of the past. But during the struggle, Jacob was wounded. God grabbed his hip bone and pulled it out of socket. And from that moment on, Jacob walked with a limp. And when we have walked through our struggles or we are currently walking through struggles, we've often been wounded. Struggles have a way of leaving a mark, whether they are emotional or physical or relational. And some of those wounds we've had, we've left in the past that we don't see anymore and some are still very present. And this morning we come as strugglers on a journey. Some of us are struggling because of decisions that we've made. Some of us struggling because of decisions of others. Some of us struggling because of the way life has just dealt us a tough hand. And some of us are struggling with God. And we're struggling all as humanity, dealing with something currently that we've not seen in our lifetime. And we're scared. And as we look back at Jacob, how he had struggled in the past with his brother, his daddy, his father-in-law, and his wives, he struggled all by himself. He made no space for others or our God to help him with these struggles, he relied on his own ability. His own, he was confident in who he was. And he wore that poker face to continue that pattern of deceit. And we sometimes, like Jacob, when we struggle, we rely on our own ability, our own confidence that we can handle it. We don't need anybody. We can just push forward and just take it on because we're strong. And we tell folks we're fine even when we're not, but how often our resources have been depleted and our energy runs out. And we see struggles as obstacles. We become frustrated. It changes our life, and the temptation is to ignore them, and it often those struggles affect our attitude. It affects our outlook in a not-so-healthy way. And we don't... And we wonder how often we're going to have to deal with this struggle. I've been struggling. I've seen this pandemic as an obstacle. I've an obstacle allowing me to, for my family to be settled. An obstacle from allowing me to build relationships with people in the church and the community. I have seen this obstacle in a way, seen this pandemic as an obstacle, as a struggle to keep me from doing my job. Wondering, when is it just going to go away? And this caused me to have a bad attitude and a bad outlook. But oftentimes I've worn my poker face, 
See, my poker face is one of sarcasm, one of humor. It kind of covers up the frustration, the anger, the, dis, this, the struggle that's within, that I just try to laugh it off, be sarcastic. And I've learned, I've had to learn to, to let go of that poker face. I've had to learn in the midst of the struggle over these past five months to pray more, to meditate on the Scriptures more, to lean on our great staff that we have here with Bill and Anna and Christy and Ruth and Melanie and Joy. I've had to learn on, to lean on y'all as, 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 as members of the congregation to maneuver through this pandemic, even though I've still had these moments where I put back on that poker face, that one of sarcasm. Jacob's life was full of struggles, and ours is too. And the battle is to see those struggles as an opportunity, an opportunity to grow as a person, an opportunity to grow in relationships, an opportunity to grow within our faith, an opportunity to lean on God and our brothers and sisters more, to see the world differently, an opportunity just to learn. I heard a musician say once, to live is to struggle and to struggle is to grow. So let us continue to move forward of those of us who struggle together as people of faith, as people of love, knowing how to reflect the Spirit of Almighty God. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious God, we come much on our heart and our mind, knowing that you are here with us. God, we ask for us to help us, God, to see our struggles around us, not in such a negative light, but to see them in a way for us, how can we grow? How can we grow closer to you? How can we grow as people? How can we use this struggle in a positive way? And God, teach us how to struggle better with others, to love better as we struggle. God, help us with our attitude, with our outlook, as we move forward, to know how we can bear the image of you, Almighty God. We love you and we praise you. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning. As of July 30th, all services will be online and the church office is closed. The church staff will be working remotely, so feel free to call or email us if you need anything. That information can be found on the church website. You can continue to give and support the church by giving online or mailing in your check. We love you, and we'll see you here next week.